911, do you have an emergency? Today on Rescue 911, a young boy falls out a second story window. Call 911. As soon as I saw him, I really thought he was dead. On Rescue 911. in Mechanicsville, Maryland on June 4, 1994, where Bobby McKenzie and her two sons were visiting her brother and his family. Another family member there that weekend was Bobby's older sister, George Ann Thornburg. Bobby looked sad on and off throughout the day. I could tell she was really in a lot of emotional pain. But it was her birthday the next day, and we wanted to celebrate it. Bobby's two sons were hanging out with their 11-year-old cousin, Michael Potter. It was kind of boring in the living room. So me, Scott, and Brandon decided we wanted to go play the computer. Jet Find is a fun game, and Scott was in good. It takes a lot of concentration, so I really wasn't paying much attention to Brandon. I saw him hit the ground. It was the scariest thing I've ever seen. Brandon, fire out the window! Call 911. As soon as I saw him, I really thought he was dead. I didn't even check. I just thought he was dead. <laughs> Bobby's husband had just passed away. And I didn't know how she could possibly stand any more emotional pain. It was horrible. I just thought that here my husband was gone and now my baby was gone. Bobby's brother, Mike Jackson, found his nephew's pulse. I couldn't tell if he was breathing. I didn't see his chest rise or anything, so I just barely turned his head to the side. And he took a real deep breath. He's breathing. Brandon? Brandon, you all right? He gradually regained consciousness, but he did say that his neck hurt. Brandon, just stay still, Brandon. I was terrified that he would be paralyzed. Okay. He kept trying to rise up. So I put my leg over his legs to hold him down. And I told him we're going to play a game to see who can lay here the longest without moving. We're gonna lay here real still, buddy. No, no, no. My two children are really everything to me. They carry on so much of their father, especially Brandon. He was the child that my husband wanted to have. He said, we need to have another baby. And this child needs to look just like me. So I couldn't even think about losing Brandon. He was crying real heavy for a while, and he just kept repeating, is this a dream? It was real hard to see him going through that. Just don't move. Don't move. It's fine, man. Among the rescuers responding was St. Mary's County Advanced Life Support Paramedic, Brenda Swim. We had no indications that there were any internal injuries. He complained of his neck hurting, and I treated him as if his neck was broken. This is the way we found him. We made sure we didn't We move. immediately put a cervical collar on his neck. 
We secured his body with straps so that he couldn't move. We're going to help you. There's a lot of people here, and we're going to be doing It seemed like a, just a bad dream to me because I thought he was never going to be able to walk again. Seven-year-old Brandon McKenzie was flown by a U.S. Park Police helicopter to Children's National Medical Center in Washington, D.C., where he was examined by pediatric neurosurgeon Stephen Schiff. The CT scan showed what we suspected, that he not only had broken his neck, but that the bones were displaced. He had one of the bones actually trapped in front of the bone beneath it. As you know, he's got a broken neck where one of the... The greatest concern was that he had an unstable neck, and any uh, unusual movement of his head or neck could indeed cause paralysis of all of his extremities. Brandon, how are you feeling right now? Traction was used to try to realign the vertebrae without risky surgery. Got a broken bone when a day passed without improvement, neurosurgeon down. William Chaddock tried one last now. procedure. And it's going to hurt a little bit, but it won't last but for a minute or so, okay? By manipulation of the spine. And then after this I was able to rotate the we'll facet back. back into place. Hopefully that will take care of this problem. Now, how's that feel? A little better? Brandon's spinal alignment had been restored to a perfectly normal position. Brandon spent eight weeks in a halo while his cracked vertebrae healed. The day that the doctor said that he could go back to regular activity, we came home and Brandon got out his rollerblades that he'd gotten for his birthday and never had on. He put them on and skated for two hours and I practically had to drag him in. Nine months have passed since Brandon's fall. I was really impressed at how quick he bounced back. He's a special kid. He's a chip off the old block, really. He looks like his father, and he, he acts like his father a lot. Losing Greg was like the hardest. I mean, he was a great guy, and he was really good with Brandon. There's no way I could ever replace his father. But I try to be there as much as I can for him. My uncle is the coolest uncle you could get. I was glad that he helped me, so I won't move my neck. Brandon's very, very fortunate. Many, many children who have sustained injuries falling from windows have very severe brain injuries, skull fractures. Many of them die. The tragedy of it all is that most of these injuries are preventable. One thing that you can do to protect your children is to make them aware that windows are not a safe place to play around. And a windowsill isn't a chair. We've got a small child that lives here, too. And now, when we have our windows open, we only open them from the top. He's been a year from hell. I don't think I could have made it through this if I hadn't been for my family. They all just, they helped me up. I think that we're healing up pretty good. I can't describe how happy I am that things are okay now.